Hey, Bonnet. So thank you for taking the time uh, to have a chat with me today. I know we've been speaking for a while. Um, tell everyone sort of a little bit about yourself and, you know, your past employment history. Hey, Thomas, thanks for having me today. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Um, my background, big time varied. Uh, over 30 years in the industry, uh, started off when I was literally 18 years old, like most people. Um, got into operations, learned how to program, got into actual development, design, um, dabbled in infrastructure, um, gained a big background in portfolio program, project management, and then uh, actually was a CIO and uh, got into executive leadership for many, many years. Um, Part of my background is I've designed applications, I've installed applications, been leading teams, been on teams, you know, with the whole purpose of actually putting something in that not only can the customer use, but their customers could use and their customers could use. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about uh, efficiencies, revenue and performance. So I've been around the industry and, you know, generalized, that's my background. Kind of a jack of all trades. That's it. I like that. I love that attitude. Um, I know we first started speaking because of that, you know, your leadership experience and, and background. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we mentioned, you know, from our first conversation, we, we, we spoke about SWAT, um, you know, SWAT. I know that you were formerly working at, you know, Magento, Adobe. Um, in, I mean, in simple terms, what is SWAT? Wow, loaded question. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, SWAT's a, it's a simple UI, but it's a proactive customer facing, which is key, self-service tool based on a central uh, repository of that customer site information. And what it is, it monitors a customer's Magento or Adobe Commerce site and actually looks for issues or concerns or problems, puts it in the database and pops it up to a UI that the customers can access through encrypted links. And what it does is it offers the customers uh, a view into what's going on with their site, um, performance issues, uh, site issues, but the key to SWI SWAT's viability is the recommendations to go fix these issues. How to fix your, um, uh, your configuration concerns, for example. What recommended changes? How do you add security, uh, operability uh, releases and patches? And overall site health, because you want to know, are your customers having a good user experience or is your site causing issues and the customer is going to go elsewhere? It also offers alerts when things are off center or alerts when a new security patch comes out, for example, and so much more. I mean, that's just the highlight. Okay. You know, um, so, it, it's, it's a tool that literally lets customers see what's going on with their site and not just running their site. Okay. So, in short, it, I suppose it improves the customer experience of, of Adobe Commerce as well. Uh, absolutely. It's, it's a great user experience tool. You can see what your customers are going to see before they see potential issues. You can fix them. Brilliant. I, I suppose that kind of answers already the next question, really, in terms of, you know, what, why was SWAT? Why was it created? <laughs> Um, well, sort of. Um, when I worked for Magento and then uh, Adobe, my, I was given um, a team. It's called Resolution Management. A few software, senior software engineers, a few project managers, and we were given the worst of the worst clients, clients that could not keep their site up, had stability issues, didn't understand how to configure it, um, whether... They didn't understand Magento when they bought it, or their softwares were their software engineers were so new they didn't know how to sit and set it up. And through these interactions with these customers, and they're not bad customers, they just had issues with the Magento site. 
my team and I started seeing patterns that this customer, this type of customer always had this problem and that type of customer always had this problem. And what happened is my, the software engineer started running little batch jobs, customer by customer. As a customer came to us, we'd run the batch job and we get six, seven, eight issues, you know, immediately go fix these. And then we'll take, after you fix them, we'll take a look at your site. And as these patterns started emerging, I challenged my site, my, my, excuse me, my team. Could I run this against everybody? At the time, there was only 395 sites. And they're like, oh my God, what? And I said, yeah, just every night, we'll just run this thing and have all this data, give it to the L1 engineers, give it to the CSMs and, you know, hey, look for the bad, look for the bad sites and be proactive about it. And okay. so what happened is SWOT, you know, the site-wide analysis tool was a brainchild of many inputs. Um, my development team, my challenge, then my development team's input, my resolution manager's input, and at the end of the day, customer input. And the actual intent was to reduce the Adobe Commerce or Magento Commerce at the time, resolution times, improve customer site stability, improve customer performance so that they could immediately they being L1 or customer uh, customer service managers, immediately direct cu their customers to go fix things. And what happened is that it would avoid lengthy interactions with the L1 team, the L2 team, the L3 team, because we were giving customers their advice. If you go fix this, this problem goes away. Okay. And through that work and many customers facing interviews, um, we created simple batch jobs, literally just batch jobs, once a night. The next challenge is, can I create a UI and let the customers in? And that's where the game changes, because now you're talking about a, an impact, a physical customer impact. And from that impact, what are the outcomes that you need to make that impact? What are the outputs to get that outcome and what are the activities to get that output so we approached it backwards until we figured out the activities and then ran it forward in prioritization so the activity gave us a great output that gave us gave us a great outcome that actually had a positive impact customers and a positive impact reducing l1 tickets Amazing. I love that. In the first two months, we reduced L1 tickets almost 20%. So SWAT, in essence, we set up guardrails. Hi, if you stay in this lane, your site's always going to work right. You change this configuration, your site's going to work right. And it's an ever-going process. Um, it, was, it was interesting. The developers accepted the challenge, and it's a great tool. There's upwards of four or five thousand customers on this thing now wow so yeah definitely i think that's proven <laughs> success then in the market um, uh it, yeah it is <laughs> amazing yes that's, that's good to hear good to hear um i mean so how, how do customers use it to benefit themselves then directly what's the direct benefit to the customer uh, uh, okay the, now we're talking the impact on the customers great question um the beauty is, is that SWAT's available 24 by seven, by seven days a week, 365, 66 days a year. Any customer that has a Magento slash Adobe Commerce can get into their specific site and see all sorts of things about it, not only in their production, but in their staging environment as well. So if you make changes, you can go run SWAT against your staging. And the beauty of SWAT is, is when we started, we were... Like, oh, my God, we're going to run this thing once a day. Oh, my God. Well, right before I left, we were we were down to we were running this thing every three hours. Wow. It was that efficient with no resource on the customer, no resource impediments on the customer site that we could actually run this, collect data and constantly repost issues, recommendation, patches, release, security issues constantly refreshing the UI. So the customers could go up and say, oh my God, I changed something 
in my uh, development, let me put it in staging, run it, is it going to mess up my site? They could see problems before their consumers saw problems. But that's However, amazing. yeah, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I was just going to say, because I know we've spoken about SWAT before, and I, um, I, myself, I didn't know that it was available, you know, 3657. Um, so I was just yeah. thinking then in terms of like Black Friday or Christmas sales or, you know, having that need to view data and that supposed performance for the customer, you know, with it being available at those times. I just think- if, the, if the customer is running, you know, in the United States, you know, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, Valentine's, uh, the 4th of July, that, you know, our, our independence, oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the customer can pull this up and literally start watching their site. They can actually see their site health status wobble. If there's something going on, they can make adjustments, test it in staging and push to production during these high traffic times as well. It's, we develop SWAT as not a one and done, you know, use it, throw it away. We developed it much like as you develop on your site, use SWAT to analyze your site before pushing to production. It's much like, you know, changing the oil in your car or changing a battery in your watch. It's constant maintenance, but the maintenance, once you get through the heavy stuff, go on up there once a week, once a day. What are the issues? What are we seeing? Because as releases and patches, um, whether it's a minor or a major, it's gonna have an effect on your development, your custom code, and you can actually see issues come up. So it's, it's an ongoing service that customers should use. And the big thing is, is that if they use it, their site's going to be healthy. Their site's always going to be available. And the consumers, people like myself, like you, are going to have an incredible user experience instead of click, freeze, click, freeze, click, freeze, which, all right, I'm going to another site. And if they can fix these problems before it gets to production, there's the impact. The customers are happy. Their consumers are happy. And that's that's, that's the principle of why this thing was built. That's it. And I think you've, you've touched on the important topic there. I suppose at the end of the day within e-commerce, it's, you know, the consumers that drive the market. Um, yes. And I, I, I wanted to ask you, Bonnet, because obviously you've got loads of experience in the e-com space. I mean... What do you think about e-commerce at the moment? And, you know, especially since COVID, what are your thoughts on, on the market and, and current e-commerce trends? All right. Um, let's start with this customer versus consumer. From a corporate standpoint or an enterprise, we have customers. Our customers have consumers. So if we get that, because that's awful confusing. When people talk customers, are you talking general populace or are you talking about the enterprise customers? So from a customer view, the people that are actually using and bought um, the commerce, they're looking for best ways that their consumers can actually click through because the whole, the game in e-commerce is conversion rates. Everybody knows it. It's great that I have a million pages of you, but if I have one click through, it, nothing. So. What's the best method to find or search products? What's the best methods from customer or consumer to pay? How fast can I get them through the pay cycle? Because now I'm doing on the customer, the consumer's impulse. Click, click, click. The other part is how do I market my site such that to the consumers that they will come to my site and have a credit an incredible user experience without that it doesn't matter how pretty how fast how sexy your site is you're not going to get business so there the part is is how do i make my e-commerce work and how do i get my marketing to drive my traffic and then my click-through rates that's my view on this other people experts in the field and you know there are many i don't claim to be an expert i know you know, this part, but with tools like SWAT, customers can self-manage their sites and make their sites better. With great marketing tools built on the genre of SWAT, 
And there are many of them out there. Adobe's got one called Marketo. You can actually integrate these and have a, an incredible user experience driving traffic and then getting traffic through your site. I, I think but that's some what, oh, oh, I was going to say, but what I've witnessed and what I see, and not only in e-commerce, but across a lot of the technology, is many of the executives that want this revenue, because at the end of the day, we're all counting beans, is they fail to see a closed loop synergy. Build the software, get it to the customer, teach the customer how to use it, customer has problem. How do we adjust the problem so that they can self-service? If it really is a problem, get it back to engineering. And how do you complete that cycle so it's automated and contiguous? And that was one of the goals of SWAT. When it came in, if we saw an issue, dump it over to engineering as, an, as a class one bug. Go fix this thing, note it, SWAT goes, oh, there's a new patch that fixes this bug. And if you can get that automated piece working, you have an incredible product. And that's a lot of the executives, a lot of corporations are struggling with that closed loop. And if it's not built into the product or not a thought process on the product, you're gonna have issues and the only way to fix it is human capital. You need bodies in L1 engineering. Yeah, and I mean, firstly, thank you for explaining closed loop synergy because obviously for me, I'm not a developer or such. So to have that explanation, I think, I thought it was something in a spaceship, <laughs> you know? Um, and I think, yeah, understanding that and having that like customer centric view is so important because it is. So I went to a shop, I don't know if the shops in the US are the same, but like a supermarket, I've gone to the shop for the clothes that I want, or let's say that the video game equipment that I want. Mm -hmm. That's what I've gone with in mind. I've got that one thing, but as I'm going to pay to the tills, they always sell your chewing gums, your batteries, or the little items that you think, actually, I'll just take that. I'll just take that. And I think having that the simplicity, as you said, in e-com, e if you're scrolling a website, that's fast and efficient and that people just think, actually, yes, yeah, you know, where it's personalized. I think that's so important. Um, um, part of that personalization is, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, we were seeing patterns with errors and figuring out recommendations through tech notes to tell our customers how to fix it. But now let's get into buying patterns. If you have a data lake large enough and you start seeing buying patterns and, and Amazon's great at this, you know, I'm, I went and looked for X and I go up there. Oh, this is cool. And if you look down, they say, well, these two products go with this and you can buy this kit. You've just given that customer the well, the consumer buying, but that customer, oh, they just bought three products to your point. Oh, I want the chewing gum. I want the tobacco. You know, yeah. I wasn't even thinking about this and that's revenue back into business. And if you can put the right patterns together, the, the just real quick, the best one, um, somebody that used to work at at, um, at Magento and Adobe, um, one of the product uh, uh, managers, he's now since left, unfortunately, and he's a VP at another company. But he was like, Men are shopping for Valentines, for their girlfriends, for their wives, for their spouses, for their significant others. They're buying this. <clears throat> Incongruous. Oh, they're also buying T-shirts and sneakers. And you're thinking that doesn't go together. I'm buying Godiva chocolate, for example. Why would I want to buy a red shirt? Yeah. If you can put these patterns together, you're going to increase your sales. And that's a real big feature of e my opinion of today is giving me the add-ons, giving me the pattern buys, not of just my patterns, but populist, whether it's a demographic or geographic or any of the graphics. How do I, oh, people in this region are buying uh, in Texas. Oh, you bought a shirt. People in Texas are buying cowboy boots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, put the link down there. <laughs> yeah, I think doing it by demographic as well. I mean, I just to use the Amazon example the other day, I was mm -hmm. cooking in the kitchen and I thought, oh, I'd love a nice knife. I went on to buy one knife block. I've, I think I've bought an entire new kitchen just because of the pop ups. I've you know, I bought knives and scissors and bowls and things I didn't even need. Um, but you see them, and I think that's the real 
where the consumer then, you know, that link between consumer and I suppose the product becomes, yeah, really clear and important. It's the showing, the impulse, and the easy click through to click pay. Do I have to go through seven screens to pay or can I just pay now? Boom, done. Yeah. And so when it saves your when it saves your details. So I know I haven't I mean I know it sounds pathetic because I'm I'm really busy all the time. So this shouldn't be a big deal. But having to enter my card details and pin numbers and things, if I can just swipe and my details are saved, I'm a I'm a sucker for it and I will do it. <laughs> um I, I'm an avid Kindle reader. And they have a Amazon's got this down to a science. Hi, these are the genres you're reading. Click, one click, boom, and it's in my Kindle, and my credit card got billed. And I'm like, before, you know, a few years back, click, 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 click. Now it's hi, just click, boom. They've hit my credit card. They've delivered my digital product. And if you can get to that point. That's, you know, that's the direction that e-commerce really needs to go, my opinion. Some softwares are there, some aren't, some have glitches, but, you know, hi, I've, oh, shoot, I already bought it. Did I really want to buy that? Well, okay, I bought it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I get that 100%. Um, I suppose coming to the end of our, our tour now, just in, in yeah. terms of e-commerce in general, um, I mean, what do you think of hot topics in e-commerce? You know, I suppose... You know, what, what um, are the hot topics for you at the moment? Well, you know, everybody's on their mind. It, it's, it's still the generation of COVID. And that really pushed, I mean, hardly, I mean, hard pushed e-commerce from a consumer point of view, which forced customers of like uh, Adobe, for example, or Magento or in others, other um, e-commerce uh, softwares, to actually refine their products. Um, you know, going back two years, there was a 43% increase in online shopping just due to COVID. Um, you know, for me, for five bucks, I can go onto my grocery store. I can order hundreds of dollars of groceries, for example. And for $5, somebody brings them to my doorstep. I don't even have to go in the grocery store. I don't have to put a mask on. I don't have to be out in the mass populace. It's that set of efficiencies they're going to drive, whether it's COVID, but COVID was the precipice that, oh, let's go do this. So you have things like uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash and Favor and grocery deliveries. Those are the types of things that uh, are driving it. You know, other things is, you know, software competition. Um, you know, as little as a few years ago, there was nobody in... Um, Magento commerce, now Adobe commerce space. And now up in the upper right hand corner of Gartner, there's a half a dozen people that are all clustered a little around. And in some areas, this this um, software enterprise has a little bit better than uh, Adobe. In this, Adobe has better or SAP has better. And they're all clustering. Now it's a question of ease of use and price point because e-commerce, is getting expensive for companies. How do you reduce your price point, still offer your customers and their consumers ease of use without literally running the company into uh, bankruptcy? And it's the question of how do you create the most positive impact based on decisive outcomes? I mean, I do this with my staff, impact, outcome, output activities. If you look at your impact, you're going to end up figuring out your activities, prioritize your activities, and you're going to get a good positive impact. That's what e-commerce companies need to figure out. And one or two are going to emerge further in that right-hand quadrant of Gartner. Right now, like I said, it's a cluster and, you know, it's a battle to see who comes out of it over, I'd say, over the next year or so. Um, yeah. You know, other big things that you asked about themes you know the big thing two three years ago was pwa um the whole universe literally switched over it it's incredible don't get me wrong it's an incredible product but it's it's still heavy on resource where you get into things like um hiva where pwa may use 50 scripts hiva uses two less resource 
lower lower footprint from a customer point of view, more access from a cu consumer point of view. So you're going to start seeing those that, that adapt modern technology, not new, but modern technologies are going to be the real winners in this industry. And then, yeah. you know, the other big thing is the big data. We talked about that. How do you look for patterns and then pop things up in consumers face and impulse buying to get those uh Oh, click, click, click. Yes, I want this. Do I need it? No, but oh, it looks cool. Click, 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 buy. One click buys. So the big data, you know, demographics, geographics, patterns, whether um, it's um, me in Texas, you in England, or friends out in Europe, you know, for example, um, watching football, American football, excuse me, but watching <laughs> football in Texas, I'll see it a commercial in New England of the United States, other people see different commercials in the same space. And it's all about marketing and consumerism. How do you get people to see different things based on their areas? And that's the pattern. So big data is going to be a massive player. They already are, but you're going to see it explode because of the invention of AI into big data as well. Yeah. We've been having chats about that in the office, actually. I think AI is going to be huge. Um, uh Unbelievable. <laughs> I suppose it's interesting from, from my perspective, obviously, I work in, in the recruitment space at Ecom. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, predominantly, it was mainly sort of magenta recruitment. And like, like you say, with the cluster of different sort of options available, I think people are evaluating different ways they can go. You know, a lot of people have gone to maybe Shopify or BigCommerce or SAP, Spryker. Obviously, Shopify have now upped their prices. Um, and people are, I mean, for the most part, the most people I follow on, on LinkedIn sort of are very understanding that Shopify needed to do this. But I think that the competition for those e-com platforms and which one to use is, is fierce at the moment. So it's interesting, I think, to see which way it's going to go. Um, My I mean, opinion, you'll see a shake out in the next year and a half of, uh, of leaders and then low price for you know, mom and pop or, or medium sized businesses, you'll, you're going to see a, a separation, my opinion. Yeah, I think, you know, I'd agree. I mean, one thing I'm always hearing, you know, I've heard a lot of, especially across in the States at the moment is Magento is dead. Like I hear that, you know, I'll see it posted probably five, six times a week, but I, I think I just, I can't see, you know, with, I, I'm constantly still asked for Magento profiles from, from clients you know, there's still a massive need there, especially in, in big businesses. And I think the thing with Hiver is that it will make it, it's really interesting to see how Hiver is going to shape up the, the Adobe commerce market and how it's going to integrate. Yep. Um, you know, there's clients that I've spoken to who, where they've had four or five devs before, you know, on their old sort of knockout programming. Um, they've now used one with, with Hiver themes. So I think, yeah, you know, data and those the, the competing nature of those platforms is over the next couple of years, as you say, it's going to be interesting to, to watch that unfold. Um, you know, from, from talking with people, um, corporations, enterprises that actually do e-commerce, not the software developers like, you know, the companies that you mentioned, you know, Adobe or Shopware or Shopify or any of these, you know, cart. Um, what I'm hearing is I'm tired of getting seven products to integrate because now I have to build all these integrations and I have to have a service bus and the service bus gets overloaded. They're looking for an integrated solution that meets their, their, their enterprise need. So for example, if you have an e-commerce system that integrates with an incredible financial system, that integrates with an incredible marketing system, that integrates with a data lake that has a BI tool that customers can look at. And if you can put all these integration points, my opinion, and again, this is, this is me talking, that's the company that's going to end up ruling the roost because, you know, when Magento started, they had sort of links to an accounting system and sort of links to a distribution network, you know, like FedEx or UPS. Well, these are all come together, you know, hi, you can go get an add on. Oh, let's put the UPS on at it. Now it's clicked in. And that's similar across most of the uh, applications out there. 
but it's the person that gets the brainchild with these integration points. Seamless. I don't have to program anything. That's my opinion. That that's going to be one of the leaders in the industry. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, I think yeah, you're, you're on certainly, especially with data, and that's a big thing that we're seeing in the in, in the recruitment ecom world as well. The need for that sort of profile. Um, and I suppose one final question for yourself, Bonnet, sure. just because I know you've got you know sort of years of rich experience in in the industry. Um, there's you know, not to not to call you old, just to call you experienced. <laughs> experienced. <laughs> um, That's, I'm chuckling. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, with with the recent, obviously, there's a lot of unfortunate news that's happening, mainly across the US at the moment. Um, you know, layoffs. These big companies, your Salesforce, Microsofts, laying off huge amounts of the workload. Um, what's a piece of advice that you'd give to someone who's recently been laid off. Oh wow. Um, well, let me let me let me phrase it this way. Twenty twenty hindsight's beautiful. You know the the world currently is is walking through some sort of economic realignment. Um, some of it is self caused. I mean, just look at the interest rates. I mean, to buy a house now is seven eight percent. The housing market's now trashed. How do you how do you fix that? But me, my personal life, 2020 hindsight, I would stay into enterprise programming, design, development, focusing on AI, big data, data lakes, the analysis, um, business intelligence reporting, because those pieces at the end of the day are actually going to drive business revenue because that's where the knowledge comes and that's where you start seeing patterns emerge. And if you are innovative enough to take advantage of a pattern and then market that pattern, you are going to be successful. If you fail at any one of those, great. Big data. Well, I'm not marketing it. You're going to crash. It's me. For me, my background, I would have gotten into AI and big data lakes. That's that's my background. And I think there is a massive need. You can see that all over the country, all over the world. Um, other opportunities. Um, biology. Let's just take a look into the uh, industry of virology. Study of viruses. COVID. Classic case pandemic. I mean, it started off small and within a year was around the world. Um, it's helping humanity, A, fix itself, sort of, but also learning how to stop these types of pandemics. Um, my son's in virology. He actually works for a, uh, a bio lab, um, figuring out, looking into the study of COVID in particular. Um, another one is communicating. Um, my daughter's an English major, always correcting me. It's good, um, but not just not writing or reading or entertainment, but knowledge and enjoyment. And how do you do that next innovation? Um, years ago, Amazon killed it with the Kindle. You know, I have thousands of books. I mean, hard paperback books. I now walk around. Oh, it's not here right now, but I walk around with a little, you know, six by nine Kindle that has 5,000 books on it right now. And I can access resources, literally. So how do you communicate that next thing? Um, a lot of it comes out of the entertainment industry, believe it or not. You know, take a look at James Bond movies, you know, back in the early 60s, James Bond with the scuba. Well, somebody saw it and said, wow, we already have an underwater breathing. But look at this little invention. Somebody saw that click innovative. Boom. You know, how can we get that next big thing? You know, flying cars. Well, sort of with the uh, Harker Harrier with the vertical liftoff, sort of, but not quite. I can't own one. You know, I don't have billions of dollars. <laughs> those, types, those types of innovation, if you can look at something and say, I can change that into a consumer based product that can be sold at a reasonable price that consumers want and need, you're going to have a win. I have solar on my house, for example. I have 
panels and batteries. Um, I don't care about power outages that are going on around the United States anymore. I, I just don't care. My house is on, has 18 hours of battery. The sun comes out, thank God, and recharges my system. Yeah. So it's those types of innovation, but how do you make it to the point where consumers can afford it? That's the next big thing. And based on what I said, you know, the, the enterprise programming, the development, getting into uh, bio or virology or chemistry, to helping humans, and then basically communicating that, they all tie together. Um, those are the big, my view, big next areas. And to your point about the layoffs, um, it's, it's a shame. I've had many, many friends get laid off. I mean, there's thousands of what Google just laid off a bunch too. And it's heart, um, it, it's heartfelt that these people are now out of work, but these areas are booming. And even if you have to take an entry level, get into these areas, they are going to explode in the next five to 10 years. My view. No, that's it. I think, you know, appreciate that. I think that's uh, really sound advice for a lot of people. I mean, I know from an emotional perspective, I, I've been, um, you know, a company I work for went into administration and it's, it's never mm -hmm. easy. You know, I think there's parts of self doubt. There's, there's parts where you think, what's my, what am I going to do next? It's very, very negative time, but looking forward and the different opportunities, I think mm -hmm. that's so important and remembering that it's not your fault. You know, it's nothing that you right. did. Ultimately, you know, the company has a budget and is accountable for that. And every cloud has a silver lining. You know, there's always a there's always a new opportunity and possibly even a you know a better one than, than you were you were on before. Than you were yeah, than you were at. And you just have to look, you know, what's the opportunity and how do you innovate in that opportunity? And exactly. you know, people you're you're gonna land on your feet. Yeah, that's it. You always do. Um Bonnet, it was amazing catching up with you thank you so so much for for your words of wisdom your humor um and your insights into the e-com space um thomas thanks again i appreciate it and you know it, it's fun chatting with you off and on over the last uh, couple months and yeah. uh look forward to speaking with you soon you too my friend speak to you soon take care bonnet bye, -bye. bye now bye